And we're going to take a look at hypothetical reasoning right now. This is used uh, certainly by scientists. It really got the scientific revolution uh, moving forward, but it's used by people way outside of science. Any, a lot of thinkers will try to deal with this. Where you're going to use hypothetical reasoning primarily is when you have a puzzling phenomenon and you can't just look to, right then and there to see what the answer would be. If I see a bunch of pollution coming down a stream and I want to find out what's causing the pollution, all I have to do is just look. If I look up 50 feet and I see a giant pipe out of a factory dumping a bunch of blue goo in there, I, I've answered the question. I don't need any highfalutin hypothetical reasoning. But sometimes what caused a puzzling phenomena happened in the past, we can't go back in time and figure it out, or maybe what's causing this puzzling phenomenon is happening outside our ability to see. Maybe it's happening on another planet or something like that. So uh, we'll talk here with Paul. Paul, do you want me to maybe throw a situation by you and you tell me what you think about this? Okay. Okay. Let's. Uh, if I was to ask the question, what killed the dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. Dinosaurs apparently kind of died out pretty fast, mm -hmm. geologically speaking, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, what might be a plausible hypothesis? It would make sense to at least some people. Uh, the Flintstones. Flintstone. Make sense of the Flintstones? <laughs> the Flintstones killed them off. The Flintstones killed them off. No. Well, uh, that's that, not that, a that'd good That would be a answer. tough one. That'd be that's a tough not one. a serious <laughs> answer. Um, well, the, of course, the, the commonly the, the widely accepted theory now is that a meteorite okay. fell, crashed into the Earth, and uh, led, led to the extinction extinction of the dinosaurs. Okay. Well, let's flesh it out a bit. So, so that's my hypothesis. So a meteorite crashes into the earth, mm -hmm. maybe causes a big dust cloud. It could have even landed in the ocean. It's going to mm -hmm. cause a dust cloud anyway, because the meteorite crashes in there. It's still going to throw dust up from the bottom of the ocean. Blanketing the earth to some degree, blocking mm -hmm. sun, plants die off quickly, dinosaurs starve to death. I'm not saying this is a good or a bad hypothesis, but it's an hypothesis. In a way, hypothetical um, reasoning works. If you, you have that puzzling phenomena, you try to come up with an hypothesis that would make some kind of sense, but you can't test that hypothesis directly. I can't go back in time, can we, and see if that meteorite hit, hit the Earth or not. They do it in the movies. They do it in the movies, but we can't do it here. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is draw an implication from that hypothesis. The implication needs to be something I can test, and it really does follow, for all intents and purposes, with necessity from the hypothesis. So an implication from the hypothesis would be something the hypothesis predicts and if we're going to be in a scientific context, it needs to be an observable yes. uh, prediction. Yeah. So if that hypothesis is true, then this implication really needs to be. So we've got to ask ourselves, and this is what thoughtful, sharp scientists need to do, if my hypothesis is true, then what would be the case that I could go out and find? So if this meteorite did hit, what would we, what could we be confident would have to be true? That we could actually In other words, what does it predict? What does it predict? That's observable. That's well, observable. it predicts uh, that if we uh, were to look at spots all over the world, we would find the remains of, of a layer of dust okay. that blanketed the Earth, and it would have to be at the time of the extinction. Now, was that 65 million years ago? I, I don't even know. Yeah, sometime. Like sometime. But okay. it would have to be a particular uh, cl uh, layer of dust that we can find by observation, okay. and it would have to have certain special features. I'm sure that the scientists will tell you the certain features that well, layer would have to have. It would at least need to see a layer of dust. Now, granted, this is like a four-minute video, so we're cutting things a little loosely here. Yeah. Well, let's You're not going to get your PhD off yeah. of this video. Let, let's pretend yeah. that if the hypothesis is true, that by golly, there would be a layer of dust. It might be a little convoluted with a little plate tectonic motion, but we're going to see a layer of dust. If we observe. If we observe it. Now, let's observe. We're going to get some, we're going to hire some underpaid grad students to go wander around the world. We'll give them shovels, and we're going to say, dig. And they'll dig holes all over the place. One of two things is going to happen. Let's say they dig, and they all see this kind of uniform layer of dust all around the Earth. What would that tell us about the hypothesis? So in that case, we've got a hypothesis we've derived a prediction from the hypothesis and the prediction is an observable phenomenon. The phenomenon has, found, has been discovered, so the prediction has come true. And we say then that the hypothesis has been confirmed. Now when we say the hypothesis is confirmed, that doesn't mean that it must be true. It just means that, it, that the evidence makes it likelier than before we considered the evidence. Okay, so if, I, 
if the meteorite crashed in the Earth, there would be a layer of dust. Mm -hmm. There is a layer of dust. Therefore, we conclude probably the hypothesis is true. And, uh, of course, it's a degree of probability. Okay. Well, we might take it a step further. If we, We're not pretty excited about this hypothesis. We're thinking mm -hmm. it's you know, looking pretty good. We haven't proved it, of course. If there's that layer of dust, what else would be near that layer? What would, if they're digging around this dust area and there's this dust, wouldn't we, wouldn't we expect to see, say, dinosaur bones? If that's where they're all dying, wouldn't it be kind of a heavy layer of dinosaur bones? Mm -hmm. so I tell those grad students, go back and dig those holes all over again, look for dinosaur bones this time. So now you've got another prediction. Another prediction. And by golly, it comes out. Right near that layer of dust, we have dinosaur bones, real thick mass of them. Mm -hmm. What would that do for the uh, hypothesis? Well, now the hypothesis has yielded two observable predictions, and they've both been found to be true. That makes the hypothesis even stronger. Okay. There, or, I'm sorry. That makes the argument stronger, the hypothesis more likely. Using this methodology, will I ever be able to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the hypothesis is true? No. no. You'll never get beyond induction. So You'll never get to absolute, the absolute certainty of a deductive argument. But you will raise the probability each time you derive a prediction and find that it comes true. Okay. So it looks like if I want to really be confident in the, my hypothesis, I keep coming up with more predictions and test them mm -hmm. accurately, and if the predictions all come out to be true, I, my confidence can grow in the mm -hmm. hypothesis, but never actually reach total, total Never certainty. reaches 100 percent certainty. But we would say then that your hypothesis is confirmed, meaning the evidence supports it, and if, it's, if your hypothesis has yielded many, many predictions and they've all come true, we might say it's well confirmed. Okay. And that means we could put them all together and produce a very strong inductive argument for the truth of your hypothesis. So it's very likely true. What would happen if these uh, underpaid grad students went out there and they just didn't find any layers of dust, no uniform mm -hmm. layers of dinosaur bones, nothing we expected, nothing the hypothesis predicted? So the prediction has failed to come yes. true, and now we say your hypothesis has been disconfirmed. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have to wrap it up because we've got a big old train coming. Well, but in that case, your hypothesis is disconfirmed. The evidence counts against it. Okay. So it looks like science isn't going to absolutely prove something. But what science can be good at <laughs> is confirming hypotheses to a very high degree. They can also disconfirm hypotheses. And then disconfirm. Like that the Earth is flat. Okay. Well, we hope that gets you into the topic. <laughs>